difficult. Oh, well, yes, it's like that. Yes, oh, that's how it happened. Uh, look, uh, uh, before answering your question, uh, let me to make a very short historical reminiscence. Uh, when this uh, text, The uh, Power of the Powerless, was written and under which circumstances? Uh, as you know, chapter 77 was published in early uh, January, was uh, dated January 1st, 1977, and the six months before there were very interesting discussions among people who then started to uh, play active role in it. Uh, who should be a spokesperson? It was all some sort of reaction to uh, the process with plastic people. Some of them are to perform. And then uh, three first spokespersons were nominated. One of them was lawyer, uh, Yuzi Hayek, and then playwright Václav Havel and uh, philosopher Jan Patočka. The third name was most surprising one because Patočka was a shy public personality in comparison with uh, many others. Uh, so when these three appeared, uh, then obviously they were exposed first to the, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, interactions, let's put it that way, with the uh, police. And uh, what happened was, and uh, this is beautifully described in the last conversation between Havel and Patochka, uh, that was published and Havel was there in jail because uh, uh, he was put into jail right after that conversation. Three small persons of Charles 77 were sitting in, uh, uh, in the hall of the uh, uh, Rusinia prison waiting for their uh, time for interrogation and Patochka led a philosophical dialogue. And uh, with them, just they were discussing about Socrates and the care for the soul, things that were somewhat unrelated with uh, what was happening around them. And uh, Havel uh, wrote in this piece, I felt for the first time as someone who is seen by Patochka, not as a disciple who's there just to record what the great professor was saying, but as his partner. And Patochka, uh, I saw, he told him something and Patochka invited him to his home and uh, Havel said, I wanted to go there uh, the same evening or as soon as possible. But the next conversation didn't take place because Havel was uh, put into detention the same day and Patochka passed away three weeks or uh, uh, six weeks later. Uh, so uh, when uh, Havel was, uh, got from prison and he uh, made there what he called his biggest political mistake because he signed a uh, agreement with the prosecutors that he would not have been following Charter 77 and he would have to be independent playwright, scholar, whatever. And then after he was released in early June, he immediately uh, uh, started to think about it and uh, the power of the powerless dedicated to memory of Jan Patochka is his reply to that. So I think the first thing you need to take into consideration is the uh, Havel's philosophical text. Havel tries to use his education and his uh, skills how to describe the situation and the model uh, that needs to be here taken by Socrates. Uh, someone uh, who is reminding to his fellow citizens that they should uh, try to live in unity with themselves, uh, not as a holders of truth, but those who know that truth is important. The truths need to be uh, uh, of our concern. Uh, so I think it's a very uh, uh, simple message and obviously Havel tries to uh, use his famous uh, 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 finger uh, 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 grocer uh, to describe his dilemmas, what does it mean to live in truth and live in lies in conformity with social standards and norms that were then uh, required from all obedient citizens. And last sentence, uh, he says that it is not that there are people who are either on one side or on the other side, but that in each every human being, as a Socrates argument, is a certain hidden dimension. Uh, we all need truth, not only uh, these professional truth seekers, actually uh, what dissident is in Havel's text 
uh, accept it with certain reservations. It's not his uh, favorite work uh, because uh, uh, he would uh, like to find some more positive uh, description of uh, that person. So uh, I think that uh, uh, you need to really take into consideration that the power of the powerless has a tremendous political effect. It appeals to people around the world uh, and uh, it maybe mobilized many people to some internal actions, but originally it was a philosophical text. Thank you very much. It really, I mean, I'm really wondering if, if my reading or our reading of today is not too much influenced by, by the conditions or our, our in, uh, by the context in which we read it. But, uh, I mean, this really opens new, new dimensions. So, okay, let's, let's go on. What do you think about... Um, about uh... Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, allow me just to uh, start with a, in a little bit heretic uh, way, because when I consulted with one of my sons, what shall I say during this, uh, during this meeting, during this panel discussion, he sent me a long, long message which in, uh, in short meant, his point was, don't be moved about your moral legacy, about your political and historical merits. You have left your generation. You left us uh, a world with uh, catastrophes like the climate change, like China, like Putin, and we have to deal with it. He is 31 years old. Our generation should deal with it. Uh, please, finally step aside. <laughs> so this was his point. <laughs> uh, 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 I just, uh, I just wanted to uh, to describe the the, uh, the uh, uh, distance between then and today is really very much, and that uh, uh, we have a. Uh, this good I was referring to first part of the title <coughs> of our discussion, OK Boomer, uh, that this is about the clash of generations, someone, you know, just recall uh, Greta Thunberg. And uh, uh, completely 